thank you so much for joining us for the James Beard Foundation Awards for Culinary Excellence. This event often called the Oscars of the food world. It's an honor just to be nominated, although I'm sure it feels really good to win too. This is the moment where they really feel like they're seen by their peers as being true leaders in their field. The Beard Award goes to... Beard Award goes Beard to... Beard Award goes to... Goes to... It's very exciting. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and good morning, foodies and food lovers alike. Um, this, for me, is sort of a very wonderful moment. Um, being, I'm on the food lover side, but I have a spouse who's a foodie, two daughters who are foodies. One of them went to culinary school and spent the, not always with parental, uh, uh, thinking that that was exactly the right thing to do. Spent a year in culinary school learning to be a pastry chef. So pretty neat to have experienced those moments through, through her eyes uh, and through the eyes of my family, uh, who are all very food appreciative. It's also a great day to be Houstonian, where we can wake up to headline stories in the Houston Chronicle that say, from space city to food city. Uh, what a great moment for us to be hosting this event. Thank you. I'm David Minsberg, and I serve as the chair of Houston First Corporation. We're the convention and tourism business of the city of Houston, and we are the marketing arm for the city of Houston. So I, I have, of course, uh, notes, and I'm going to veer from the notes from time to time because today's story in the Chronicle was far much better than anything that I could have possibly written. And so I am going to read to you from time to time a little of the great quotes that are attributed to us. Whether you're here with us in Houston or joining us live online for this exciting event, I want to welcome you all to what is a celebration of food and culture. We are so pleased to have as our honored guest the James Beard Foundation. What a treat for us to be able to have them here in Houston Claire, thank you for being here, and thank you for being part of this wonderful event. We so appreciate selecting Houston for the site of this year's announcement of the nominees for these prestigious awards, known as the Oscars of the food industry. As the culinary and cultural capital of the South, Houston is honored to be selected. As chef Mo chef of the restaurant Momofuku restaurant uh, group and host of Netflix Ugly Delicious says he's been high on the Houston food scene for about eight years now, a period of time in which Houston has really grown, blossomed, and shown its, uh, its real capabilities in this area, says the diversity, the culinary talent, even the city's lack of zoning. Yeah. All, yeah, I heard a yeah on that. <laughs> All conspire to make a great food destination. Houston has become a place that has become a food tourism spot and noted around the country. I want to now congratulate all of the talented chefs and restaurants around the nation that have made it onto the list of semifinalists we salute you. All of us here today and all of us around the country and all of us that follow the foodie scene, we salute you for your incredible efforts. And we're especially proud, and I am, and I know many of you in the audience, of the 10 Houston chefs and restaurants that made this year's list of the James Beard semifinalists. Please, please join me in recognizing them. From the Chronicle again, nearly three decades later, Houston is not just the hottest food city in Houston, it owns a growing brand of one, America, one of America's great culinary capitals. Houston is a must-go place for foodies thanks to what these chefs are able to create in their restaurants each and every day. According to no less an authority 
and no farther away than Boston, the Boston Globe, Houston is a food lover's paradise. The city has something for everyone, from museums to performing arts, from opera to hip hop. We've got top-notch talent. We've got top-notch treasures, beautiful parks, talented artists, world champions, sports teams, musical icons, NASA, where we're celebrating the 50th anniversary this year of the landing on the moon. I hope you will all be back for the many, many festivities that we've planned for this summer to celebrate that 50th anniversary. And you just missed the largest rodeo in the world. No matter when you visit, you can experience our Houston blend of culture. Our diversity shines through no matter where you go throughout this city. In our daily lives, food has always been the tie that binds. When we break bread with one another, sharing laughter and stories, these are the moments that nourish both body and soul and unite us in a greater community. Drawn together over a single meal, we carry these moments with us long after the last bite. Is it any wonder then that a city like Houston, which values community above all, should have such a love affair with food? The two, the culture and the food, are linked together in a bond that feeds both the quality of our cuisine and the character of our people. Our congratulations and thanks to all the incredible creative chefs. They're not just chefs. When we go and we see the work that they've done throughout their kitchens and when we dine at their tables, they put enormous heart and soul into the food that, that you see in front of you. And to the restaurants around the country that make the list of finals. What an honor and what an accomplishment. We salute those amazing talents we have here in our city who help make Houston such a great place to live and eat. And now, it's my great pleasure to welcome the Chief Executive Officer of the James Beard Foundation, Claire Reichenbach. Congratulations on those fantastic headlines. Um, thank you, David, and thank you to our munificent hosts this morning, Houston First, Tracy Vaught, and uh, an H-Town restaurant group, which is a semi-finalist for Outstanding Restaurateur this year. Along with James Beard award-winning chef, Hugo Ortega, I want to congratulate you and convey our sincerest thanks to you all. So we are so excited to be kicking off our 2019 James Beard Awards celebrations here in Houston, where the secret of the city's vibrant and dynamic culinary scene is finally out. Houston has received over 100 honors for James Beard Award winners, nominees, and semi-finalists, including the 10 semi-finalists recognized this year, which is phenomenal. And national publications have now discovered what Houstonians have known for years, that the diversity and the distinctiveness of Houston's dining scene is on par with America's best culinary destinations. And in fact, GQ just called Houston the new capital of Southern cool, quite an accolade. <laughs> but coolness and good food are only part of what the culinary world contributes to the culture of a city, the culture of our country. Increasingly, chefs and other culinary professionals are also doing good and giving back, supporting sustainable agriculture, creating inclusive work environments, and advocating for policies that improve access to good food for all. In short, they're changing the world through food, which aligns with the mission of the James Beard Foundation, where our new mantra, and in fact the theme of this year's James Beard Awards, is good food for good. Good Food for Good represents the Foundation's steadfast commitment to the pursuit of culinary excellence and our support of the tireless efforts of the industry to create a better food system, one that is delicious, yes, but one that is diverse and sustainable for all. Our annual James Beard Awards begin on Friday, April the 26th in New York City, where we will honor achievements in culinary journalism, broadcast and publishing with our annual media awards. And then on Sunday, May the 5th in Chicago, we'll honor some of the most inspiring change agents and visionaries in the food system with our annual leadership awards. All culminating in our gala awards on Monday, May the 6th at the Lyric Opera 
of Chicago, where we'll honor the creme de la creme of our restaurant and chef community. Um, I can't wait. So as we look ahead to our award celebrations in the coming months in New York and Chicago, everyone is welcome to join and help celebrate. We will live stream both the gala and the media awards on our Twitter handle, handle at Beard Foundation, and on our awards page at jamesbeard.org. So please do join us. And of course, none of this happens without the phenomenal leadership and support of so many, starting with our board members, including Jan Risi, who is here with us today. I'm delighted to see you, Jan. They are led by our board chair, Fred Siegel. And I must also thank our passionate committee members and judges who gift the foundation with their time, commitment, and wisdom throughout the year. Um, and I also want to recognize our trustee and awards committee chair, who's also a James Beard, a weird Beard winning chef herself, um, Anne Quattrano, who will help us announce today's nominees, along with Mitchell Davis, the foundation's chief strategy officer. Um, huge thanks to all of them and to our generous award sponsors. The James Beard Awards are presented in association with Chicago O'Hare and Midway International Airports and Magellan Corporation. Our premier sponsors are All Clad Metal Crafters, American Airlines, HMS Host, Lavazza, and San Pellegrino Sparkling Natural Mineral Water. Our supporting sponsors are Hyatt, the National Restaurant Association, Robert Mondavi Winery, Schooner Bay Salmon, Tabasco Sauce, Valrona, White Claw Hard Seltzer, and Windstar Cruises. Our gala reception sponsors are Dogfish Headcraft Brewery, Echo Lab, Front of House, and Kendall College. And additional support is provided by Chefsware, Loaca, and Vatera Dinnerware. Thank you so much. And we also want to give special thanks to our broadcast partner, Intersport, who are here with us this morning. Our proud hosts in Chicago are Choose Chicago and the Illinois Restaurant Association. We extend our deepest thanks to them for hosting our upcoming gala awards. I also want to thank Mary Kay Bonoma, who is with us today, and Sam Toya from the Illinois Restaurant Association for all of your help and support in making this year's awards happen. Uh, we truly could not do it without you. And finally, our media awards are presented in association with Visit Philadelphia, um, we feel profoundly lucky to benefit from the generosity of, of cities like Chicago, Philadelphia, and of course Houston for all our sponsors and, and all our sponsors and supporting our foundation's mission. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's get on with the show. Um, we'll begin with the nominees for our Broadcast Media Awards, recognizing work in television, webcast, and radio programs aired in 2018. Our first category is Documentary, and the nominees are Chef Flynn on Hulu, iTunes, and YouTube, Funky, LA Festival and Vimeo, Modified on Film Festivals and Vimeo, Onto a new category, Outstanding Reporting. Here are the nominees. Deep Dive for Food and Thought, 2018 PyeongChang Winter Olympics, reporter David Chang on NBC and NBCSN. In Real Life, Why You Must Try Native American Cuisine, by Yara Emjiri, which airs on YouTube and AJ+. The Sportful, um, Yuanda Finds Her Superpower, Reporter, Dan Pashman, which is on Stitcher. Next up, we love talking about food, but thanks to the, pre the prevalence of podcasting, sharing our food memories, obsessions, and critiques with the world has become an art form. Um, these next awards honor those voices. The nominees for Best Food Podcast are Copper and Heat, Be a Girl, which airs on Copper and Heat, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. Feed. The Feed, Paletas and Other Icy Treats, which airs on Podcast One. Racist Sandwich, A Raising Black Barbecue, which airs on iTunes, Racist Sandwich, and Stitcher. For radio shows, the nominees are California Foodways, providing a taste of Oaxaca to the Central Valley. Can Ag and Wildlife Coexist? Rice Farmers Think So. And Frozen Burrito Royalty in the, in the Central Valley 
which airs on KQED, California Foodways. The Food Chain, Raw Grief and Widowed, which airs on BBC World Service. KCRW's Good Food, Remembering Jonathan Gold, which airs on KCRW. Next, we have the nominees for specials on TV online, and they are Anthony Bourdain, Explore Parts Unknown, Little Los Angeles, which airs on CNN, Explore Parts Unknown, and Roads and Kingdom. Spencer's Big Holiday, which airs on Gusto, and Taste Buds, Chef Giving, on ABC. The nominees for television program in studio or fixed location are Barefoot Contessa, Cook Like a Pro, The Mary Poppins Show on the Food Network, Good Eats Reloaded, Stake Your Claim on the Cooking Channel, and Patty's Mexican Table, Tijuana Stories from the Border, which airs on WET Washington, distributed nationally by American Public Te Television. Um, <clears throat> these are the nominees for television program on location, The Migrant Kitchen, Manusha, on KCET and Link TV, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, Salt, on Netflix, um, Ugly Delicious, Fried Chicken, which airs on Netflix. For online video, a fixed location and or instructional, the nominees are Handcrafted, How to Make Handmade Soba Noodles on Bon Appetit, Mad Genius, Crispy Cheese Sticks, Waffled Okonomiyaki, and Puff Pastry, <laughs> which airs on Food & Wine, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, Masterclass, Dominique Ansel teaches French pastry fundamentals, also on um, Masterclass. The nominees for online video on location are First We Feast Food Skills, Mozzarella King of New York on YouTube, Kitchen Unnecessary, Fire Morels on YouTube and Facebook, NPR Foraging, Eating Wild Sea Creatures, You Can Eat Dandelions and The Hunt of Morals, um, also on NPR. We honor visual and technical excellence by recognizing the importance of photography and editing in support of broadcast categories. The nominees are Anthony Bourdain, Explore Parts Unknown, Yuki Azawa, Azawa, Sarah Hagley, Natalie Karuni, and Kate Kunath, and August Therma on CNN, Explore Parts Unknown, Roads and Kingdoms. Chef's Table, Will Basanta, Adam Bricker, and Danny O'Malley, which airs on Netflix. From the Wild, season four, Kevin Kosowan on, Vim on Vimeo. Media Awards honors an outstanding personality on television on or webcast. The nominees are Samin Nosrat, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat on Netflix, Marcus Samuelson, No Passport Required on PBS, and Molly Ye, Girl Meets Farm on the Food Network. Now, to announce the journalism categories, please welcome the Foundation's Chief Strategy Officer, Mitchell Davis. Thank you, Claire. I've only been here not even 24 hours. I've already had Pakistani, Indian, Mexican, <laughs> French, a little Vietnamese flavor. I think Houston deserves all the accolades it gets. Our journalism awards recognize exceptional writing and reporting across all media in print and online. These days, we're reminded on a daily basis of the importance of journalists to report the truth, to give voice to those who cannot be heard, and to use their storytelling skills to write what we know as the first draft of history. Our first category honors those exceptional writers who use equal parts truth and opinion to craft colorful tales of food and dining with regularity. These are the nominees for food columns. America's Best Worst Cook. Hi, I'm America's Best Worst Cook. <laughs> Dear Chefs, Will Eating This Kill Me? And How to Roast a Chicken? The Answers Are Horrifying by J.J. Good in Taste. Local Fair, The Question of Dinner, Dixie Vodka, and Folk Witness by John T. Edge in Oxford American. And what we talk about when we talk about American food for our columns, the pickled cucumbers that survived the 1980s AIDS epidemic, a second look at the tuna sandwiches all American history, and freedom and borscht for Ukrainian Jewish emigres by Mary Uehara, also in taste. Our next journalism category is dining and travel, and the nominees are Chow Down for a New Orleans food diary, a Portland food diary, and a Chicago food diary, lots of food to diarize, by Danny Chow in The Ringer. 
Dim Sum is Dead, Long Live Dim Sum by Max Falkowitz in Airbnb magazine. Many Chinas, Many Tables by Jonathan Kaufman and his team at San Francisco Chronicle. For feature reporting, the nominees are Big in Japan by Tejal Rao, the New York Times Magazine, A Kingdom from Dust by Mark Arax in the California Sunday Magazine, and Shell Game, Saving Florida's Oysters Could Mean Killing a Way of Life by Laura Riley and Eve Edelheit in Tampa Bay Times. The next category is Health and Wellness. And the articles nominated are Clean Labels, Dirty Little Secret by Nadia Berenstein in The New Food Economy, The Last Conversation You'll Ever Need to Have About Eating Right, and The Last Conversation You'll Need to Have on Eating Right, The Follow-Ups by Mark Bittman and David Katz in New York Magazine and on Grub Street. Uh, and last, White People Food is Creating an Unattainable Picture of Health by Kristen Aiken in Huff Post. Next, we honor food coverage in a general interest publication, and the nominees are New York Magazine uh, for the work by Robin Raisfeld, Rob Patronite, Maggie Bullock, and the staff of New York Magazine, Roads and Kingdoms by Nathan Thornburg, Matt Goulding, Anup Kapala, and the Roads and Kingdoms team, and T, the New York Times Style Magazine by Kurt Soller, Hanya Yanagihara, and the staff of T Magazine. The nominees in the food ways category are Back to Where It All Began, I Had Never Eaten in Ghana Before, But My Ancestors Had by Michael W. Twitty in Bon Appetit, A Hunger for Tomatoes by Shane Mitchell, The Bitter Southerner, <laughs> What is Northern Food by Steve Hoffman in Artful Living, an interesting juxtaposition there. These are the nominees for the home cooking category, Melissa Clark's Thanksgiving by Melissa Clark, of course, in the New York Times. The Subtle Thrills of Cold Chicken Salad, Kathy Irway in Taste, very subtle perhaps. Top Secret Ingredients by Kathleen Purvis in Garden and Gun. Honoring Excellence in Innovative Storytelling, the nominees are In Search of Water Boiled Fish by Angie Wang for Eater. The 100 Most Jewish Foods by Alana Newhouse for Tablet Magazine and What's in a Food Truck by Bonnie Berkowitz, Seth Blanchard, Aaron Steckelberg, and Monica Yulmanu in the Washington Post. Our next category are nominees in the investigative reporting category. It's Not Fair, Not Right, How America Treats Its Black Farmers by Debbie Weingarten and Audra Mulkern for The Guardian and the Economic Hardship Reporting Project. A Killing Season by Boyce Upholt in The New Republic and Victims Blame FDA for Food Recall Failures by Christine Hane Dare Bryan in Politico. We honor unique storytelling through personal essay, the long form category, and the nominees are I Made the Pizza Cinnamon Rolls from Mario Batali's Sexual Misconduct Apology Letter by Geraldine De Reuter in Everywhereist.com. <laughs> Need to find me? Ask my ham man by Catherine Down in the New York Times. I need a hand, man. Writing an Iranian cookbook in an age of anxiety by Naz Daravian in The Atlantic. The nominees for personal essay short form are Doritos is developing lady-friendly chips because you should never hear a woman crunch <laughs> by Maura Judkis in The Washington Post. I'm a chef with terminal cancer. This is what I'm doing with the time I have left by Fatima Ali, Bon Appetit and Savoring the School Lunch by Rebecca Den of the Seattle Times. Our nominees for Best Profile introduce us to some of the food world's most interesting personalities. They are Heaven Was a Place in Harlem by Vince Dixon in Eater, The Short and Brilliant Life of Ernest Matthew Mickler by Michael Adno in The Bitter Southerner, and You Died, The Resurrection of a Cook in the Heart of San Francisco's Demanding Culinary Scene by Jonathan Kaufman of the San Francisco Chronicle. Moving on to the wine and spirits and other beverages category, we have The Gulp War by Dave Stroop in Eater, Welch's Grape Jelly with Alcohol, How Trump's Horrific Wine Became the Ultimate Metaphor for His Presidency by Corby Cummer of Vanity Fair, and Why is the Wine World So Unwoke by John Bonet in Punch. And uh, a final few Journalism Awards categories. Um, this year's nominees for the Craig Claiborne Distinguished Restaurant Review Award are 
and there's some long names here, so bear with me. Counterintelligence, the Hearth and Hound, April Bloomfield's new Los Angeles restaurant is nothing like a gastro pub. There's Crocodile and Hog Stomach, but Jonathan Gold is all about the crusty rice at Nature Pagoda. And at Middle Eastern restaurants, it all starts with hummus. Jonathan Gold says, Babel's is magnificent by the late Jonathan Gold of Los Angeles Times. The Fire Gods of Washington, D.C., David Chang's Major Domo is no minor feat, and North America's Best Cantonese Food is in Canada by Bill Addison at Eater. And The Four Seasons Returns, But Can It Come Back? Why David Chang Matters, and A Celebration of Black Southern Food at June Baby in Seattle, all by Pete Wells in the New York Times. For our MFK, Fing uh, sorry, MFK Fisher Distinguished Writing Award, our nominees are a Kingdom from Dust by Mark Arex of the California Sunday Magazine, The Poet's Table by Mayuk Zen of Poetry Foundation, and What is Northern Food, Steve Hoffman in Artful Living. This year we lost an irreplaceable voice in the world of culinary journalism, Jonathan Gold, nominated of the LA Times. In his honor, we introduce a new award, shining a light on the local reporters, writers, and reviewers who bring their communities to life. We're calling this the Jonathan Gold Local Voice Award, and this year the new nominees are Storied Ovens, Food Outside the U.S. Open Gates, and a New Destination for Chinese Food, Not Flushing But Forest Hills, by Max Falkowitz of the New York Times and Plate Magazine. My Dinner at the Playboy Club, Curry and Roti Destination Sings, Lights Up Queens, and Where New Yorkers Actually Eat in Times Square by Robert Sitsema of Eater, New York. And Yes Indeed, Lord, Queen's Cuisine, Where Everything Comes from the Heart, Top 10 New Orleans Restaurants for 2019, and Sexual Harassment Allegations preceded Sucre co-founder Trey Khanna's Departure by Brett Anderson at NOLA.com and the Times Picayune. As you can see, there's an incredible diversity of voices uh, in the food journalism world, and we're proud to honor them across the whole spectrum. And we'll be announcing the last award, Publication of the Year, on April 26th at our Media Awards in New York City. And that concludes the nominees for journalism. Congratulations to them all. So to introduce our book awards categories, please welcome our foundation's awards committee chair and trustee, who is also a James Beard award-winning chef herself behind Atlanta's Bacchanalia, Star Provisions Market, and Cafe, and Cafe, Float Away Cafe, and more, our dear, beloved Anne Quatrano. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Now to, oh, that's me, sorry. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, and thank you to all my fellow committee members, chairs, judges, and foundation staff, whom I am so humbled to lead. The time and effort you put into ensuring that the foundation continues to grow and prosper throughout the year is truly irreplaceable, and I cannot thank you enough. To continue this growth this year in particular, the committee is dedicated to driving change in the area of inclusivity. As we looked at the changing landscape of our industry and around the world at large, we started first with our own committee and took aim at one simple goal, to make sure that our own racial and gender makeup aligns more with the growing diversity in our country and in our restaurants. With that said, I'm so excited to continue the nominee announcements. Our next category honors excellence in the world of culinary authorship. From cookbooks to memoirs and every delicious word in between, these are our book award nominees. And there's no tastier way to start than to begin with the nominees for baking and dessert. Black Girl Baking, Wholesome Recipes, inspiring by, inspired by Soulful Upbringing, Jarell Guy, Page Street Publishing Company. Pie Squared, Irresistibly Easy, Sweet and Savory Slab Pies, Kathy Barrow. Grand Central Publishing. Sugar, Dessert and Sweets from the Modern Middle East, Greg Maloof and Lucy Maloof, Hard Grant, Hardy Grant Books. In the beverage category, the nominees are Aperitif, Cocktail Hour, The French Way, Rebecca Pepier, I'm sorry, Rebecca Pepler, Clarkson Potter. The Aviary Cocktail Grant Aches, Nick Kakonis, Mika Melton, Alan Hemberger, and Sarah Hemberger of the Alinea Group. Cocktail Codex, Alex Day, Nick Fauchald, and David Kaplan, 10 Speed Press. For general cooking, the nominees are Everyday Dory, Dory Greenspan, 
Rux Martin, Hofflin Mif Miffler, Harcourt. Milk Street, Tuesday nights, Christopher Kimball, Little Brown and Company. Otolongi Simple, the Otom Otolongi 10 Speed Press. Now for books focused on health and special diets, here are the nominees. The Complete Diabetes Cookbooks, editors at America's Test Kitchen, America's Test Kitchen. Eat a Little Better, Sam Cass, Clarkson Potter. More with Less, Jody Marino, Roost Books. Next up, the nominees for American Cooking. A Common Table, 80 Recipes and Stories from My Shared Cultures, Cynthia Chen McTernan. Between Harlem and Heaven, Afro-Asia American Cooking for Big Nights, Weeknights, and Every Day, J.J. Johnson and Alexander Smalls, Flat Iron Books. Sweet Home Cafe Cookbook, A Celebration of African American Cooking, Albert G. Lucas and Jessica B. Harris, some Smithsonian books. Let's go global now with our nominees for international focus books. They are Feast, Food of the Islamic World, Anissa Helu, Echo. The Food of Northern Thailand, Austin Bush, Clarkson Potter. I am a Filipino, Nicole Ponseca, and Miguel Trinidad Artisan Books. Next up, in a world where everyone with a cell phone can fancy themselves a food photographer, our next nominees have painstakingly honored their craft, telling their stories through exquisite visuals that display an expertise that jumps off the page. These are the nominees for photography. Season, Big Flavors, Beautiful Food, Nick Sharma, Chronicle Books. Tokyo New Wave, Andrea Fazari, 10 Speed Press. Wild Adventure Cookbook, Louisa Brimble, Prestel Publishing. For reference, history, and scholarship, here are the nominees. Canned, The Rise and Fall of Consumer Confidence in the American Food Industry. Anna Zide, University of California Press. Catfish Dreams, Scott, Ed Scott's fight for his family farm and racial justice in the Mississippi Delta. Julia Rankin, University of Georgia Press. Creole Italian, Sicilian immigrants and the shaping of New Orleans food culture. Justin Nystrom, University of Georgia Press. The restaurant professional, the, for the restaurant and professional nominees are Chicken and Charcoal, Yakitori, Yardbird, Hong Kong, Matt, Abergel, Baden Press. From the Earth, World's Great Rare and Almost Forgotten Vegetables, Peter Gilmore, Hardy Grant Books. Rich Table, Evan Rich and Sarah Rich, Chronicle Books. Here are the nominees for books on a single subject. Bread and Butter, History, Culture, and Recipe. Richard Snape's Grant Harrington and Eve Hemingway, Quadrille Publishing. Goat, Cooking and Eating, James Wetler, Quadrille Publishing. Korean Barbecue, Master Your Grill in Seven Sauces, Bill Kim. Next, our nominees for Vegetable Focused Cooking. Almonds, Anchovies, and Pancetta, a veg vegetarian cookbook, kind of. Cal P Paternell. William Morrow Cookbooks. Salad Dish, Eileen Rosen, Artisan Books. Vegetarian Vietnam, Car Cameron Stotch, W.W. W. Norton and Company. In the category of writing, the nominees are Buttermilk Graffiti, A Chef's Journey to Discover America's New Melting Pot Cuisine, Edward Lee, Artisan Books. Hippie Food, how Back to the Landers, Long Hairs, and Revolutionaries Change the Way We Eat. Jonathan Kaufman, William Morrow. Pasta, Pane, Vino, Deep Travels Through Italy's Food Culture. Matt Golding, Harper Wave, and Anthony Bourdain. The two final book awards, Book of the Year and Cookbook Hall of Fame, will be announced at our Media Awards ceremony on April 26th in New York. 
Now I'll turn things back over to Claire as we move on to the first of our Restaurant and Chef Awards. Thank you so much, Anne. Um, before we get to the nominees, um, I want to once again acknowledge and thank our proud hosts at Chu Chicago and welcome their president and CEO, David Whitaker, to help me announce our regional best chef nominees. David. Good morning, everyone. Uh, and I really want to take a moment, David, and thank you, uh, congratulate you. We obviously in Chicago know the importance of the relationship with culinary and tourism. You've obviously uh, you picked up on that and are leading the way here. Uh, and, you know, we've heard of Convention and Visitor Bureau weather. You're really good. I just want you to know. <laughs> You're really good. But again, my sincere congratulations to the Houston First and the entire team. Well done. And we all invite you to Chicago for the awards. We still have a few rooms to sell, so please uh, uh, go online and book your trip. Um, we're so proud to host the awards in Chicago for the fifth annual year, and we're thrilled that the awards will call Chicago home through 2027. So what a great partnership. We're also proud to support the Foundation's mission of Good Food for Good. We'll all be collaborating on its many philanthropic efforts, endeavors, including student scholarships, the support of its impact programs, and the commitment to establish a more sustainable food system through education, advocacy, and thought leadership. We value all of our leaders in Chicago's chef and restaurant community as you do here in Houston, and they are one of the keys to creating a thriver visitor, thriving visitor destination as well as an important part of our city's economy. And that brings us to the nominees in the 10 regional best chef categories who are making neighborhoods and towns all across the country more vibrant and delicious. Let's begin in my backyard, the Great Lakes, covering Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Ohio. And the nominees are Diana Davila from Mitikoya, Antogiera, Chicago. Jason Hamill, Lula Cafe, Chicago. Beverly Kim and Johnny Clark, Parachute, Chicago. You get a theme here, I think. <laughs> David Posey and Anna Posey, Elsky, Chicago. Noah Sandoval, Oriole, Chicago. And Lee Wolin, Boca, Chicago. Claire? Thank you, David. And moving to the James Beard Foundation's home base, New York City, the nominees are Sean Gray, Mamufuku Co. Brooks Headley, Superiority Burger. Daniela Soto Inez, Atla. Alex Stupak, Empeon, Midtown. And Jody Williams and Rita Sodi, Via Carota. Congratulations. And for Best Chef Mid-Atlantic, the nominees are Amy Brandwine, Centralina, Washington, D.C. Tom Kuninen, Bad Saint, Washington, D.C. Rich Landau, Veg, Philadelphia. Christina Martinez, South Philly Barbacoa, Philadelphia. And Cindy Wolf, Charleston, in Baltimore. For Best Chef Midwest, the nominees are Michael Colvino, Colvino Supper Club and Tasting Room, Kansas City, Missouri. Michael Galina, Vichia, St. Louis. Anne Kim, Young Joni, Minneapolis. Jamie Malone, Grand Cafe, Minneapolis. And Christina Wen, Hi Hi, Minneapolis. And next, we move on to Best Chef Northeast, and the nominees are Tiffany Faison, Tiger Mama, Boston, James Mark, North, in Providence, Tony Messina, Uni, in Boston, Cassie Pluma, Piuma, I'm sorry, Cassie, Cassie Piuma, Sarma, in Somerville, Massachusetts, and Benjamin Suckle, from Oberlin, in Providence. Congratulations. So let's move westward now to the birthplace of James Beard himself. Uh, these are the nominees for Best Chef Northwest. Peter Cho, Han Oak, Portland, Oregon. Katie Millard, Coquine, Portland, Oregon. 
Bradley Williams, Canlis, Seattle. Justin Woodward, Castagna, Portland. Rachel Yang and Seif Churchy, Jewel, Seattle. Congratulations. And on to the nominees for Best Chef, Best Chef South. Vishwesh Bhatt, Snack Bar, Oxford, Mississippi. Jose Enrique, Jose Enrique, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Kristen Essig and Michael Stolsus from Coquette in New Orleans. Slade Rushing, Brennan's in New Orleans. And Isaac Toops from Toops Meadery, New Orleans. Congratulations. <laughs> So the next region is a home to the great state of Texas. So here are the nominees for Best Chef Southwest. Charlene Badman, F&B, Scottsdale, Arizona. Kevin Fink, Emma and Rye, Austin. Michael Fachesek, um, Olamai, Austin. Bryce Gilmore, Barley Swine, Austin. Steve McHugh, Cured, San Antonio. Congratulations. And now for the Best Chef Southeast. The nominees are Mashama Bailey, The Gray in Savannah, Georgia. Katie Booten, Karate, Asheville. Cassidy Dabney, The Bam at Blackberry Farm, Wallard, Tennessee. And Ryan Smith, Staple House, Atlanta. And last, Andrew, Andrew Tyser and Michael Hudman from Andrew Michael Italian Kitchen in Memphis. Congratulations. So in our final region, the term melting pot doesn't just refer to the population, but it perfectly describes the diversity of flavors found within its borders. These are the nominees for Best Chef West. Michael Simarusti, Providence, Los Angeles. Jeremy Fox, Rustic Canyon, Santa Monica. Jessica Coslow, Squire, Los Angeles. Travis Lett, um, Galinia, Venice. Joshua Skeens, Saison, San Francisco. So congratulations to all the nominees. Thank you, David, for joining us and for your invaluable partnership and support. Thank you so much. So next, la, now let's welcome back Mitchell Davis to announce our next group of nominees. Mitchell. Thank you. We'll continue our awards with restaurant design. These awards obviously recognize the importance of the environment and the dining experience in this beautiful room, I think, and last night's beautiful restaurant. We know, we know the importance that the setting provides. Let's start with nominees for outstanding restaurant design for restaurants of 75 seats and under. Um, the first, the firm Heliotrope Architects and Price Erickson Interior Design, the project Wilmot's Ghost in Seattle. Second nominee, the firm is Roman and Williams. The project is La Mercerie in New York City. And the third finalist firm, Studio Writers for the project Atomix, also in New York City. The nominees for Outstanding Restaurant Design, 76 seats and over. You see, it, you see the pattern. The firm is Land and Sea Department. The project is Lonesome Rose in Chicago. Second nominee, the firm is Studio Razavi Architecture. The project is Bocaria in New York City. And the final finalist is the firm is Parts and Labor Design. The project is Pacific Standard Time in Chicago. This year we've added a third category of restaurant size that honors food as staples that we can all relate to, the quick bite to eat. These are food trucks, coffee shops, bars, pubs, diners. Um, all, that means not necessarily restaurants, so we call them other eating and drinking places. <laughs> but we're excited because I think they show the breadth of, of, of eating out there and of design. Um, the first nominee is the firm Avroco, and the project is China Live in San Francisco. The second nominee is Schwartz and Architecture, S&A. The project is El Pipila, also in San Francisco. And the final nominee is Summer Ops for the project Island Oyster in New York City. We have already announced a number of this year's honorees over the last few months. One of them, these are honorees for other um, awards, Lifetime Achievement and various 
other large awards. One of the awards we've also announced is Design Icon, and it recognizes pillars of the design community whose visions have inspired restaurant design over the last 20 years. This year, to note, we'll be honoring Canlis, the landmark Seattle restaurant, which opened in 1950. Another one of the awards that we've, we've made a public announcement already is our Humanitarian of the Year Award. This year, the recipient is The Giving Kitchen, which provides emergency assistance to food service workers through financial support and a network of community resources. And our Lifetime Achievement Award will be presented to five times James Beard Award winner, Chef Patrick O'Connell of the Inn at Little Washington in Virginia. This year's America's Classics Award winners are, and these have been announced, but we're going to summarize them here, Faux 79 in Garden Grove, California, Jim's Steak and Spaghetti House in Huntington, West Virginia, A&A &A Bake and Double and Roti Shop of Brooklyn, New York, Senhurst Bakery and Burak Cafe of McCook, Nebraska, and Annie's Paramount Steakhouse of Washington, D.C. You sh I would encourage you to visit them all. I know Houston is home to some America's Classics winners as well. Another type of award that we give out on the weekend in May is our Leadership Awards, which recognize visionaries who are making our world a safer, more sustainable, healthy, and just place for everyone. This year's honorees for James Beard Foundation Leadership Awards are the Pioneer Valley Workers Center Women's Collective, Cornelius Blanding, the Executive Director of Federation of Southern Cooperatives, Leah Penniman, the Co-Executive Director and Program Manager of Soul Fire Farm, Sean Sherman, the founder and CEO of The Sioux Chef, and Anim Steele, the co-founder and executive director of Real Food Generation. These honorees will be celebrated at a special ceremony on May 5th in Chicago, the night before our awards gala. The leadership awards are presented in association with Deloitte, and Deloitte's support has enabled our foundation to offer each of our leadership award winners a grant to continue their important work in changing the food system. Uh, now it's time to toast our next set of Restaurant and Chef nominees. They are the brilliant mad scientists that mix and muddle, shake and stir at all hours of the day and night, tirelessly searching for that delicious chemical reaction that will send us home happy. You know what we mean, right? <laughs> if we get home, that is. These are the awards recognizing beverage excellence. We begin with Outstanding Bar Program, and the nominees are Bar Agricole in San Francisco, Dead Rabbit in New York City, Kimball House in Decatur, Georgia, Lost Lake in Chicago, and Ticonderoga Club in Atlanta. Our nominees for Outstanding Wine Program, presented by Robert Mondavi Winery, are Bacchanal in New Orleans, Bennu in San Francisco, Miller Union in Atlanta, Night and Market in Los Angeles, and Spiaggia in Chicago. Our nominees for Outstanding Wine spirits or beer producer are Kathy Corson of Corson Winery in St. Helena, California, Anne Marshall and Scott Blackwell of High Wire Distilling Company in Charleston, South Carolina, Steve Mathiason of Mathiason Wines in Napa, California, Rob Todd of Allagash Brewing Company in Portland, Maine, and Lance Winters of St. George Spirits in Alameda, California. Now, let's move to the talented individuals who quench our thirst to the, from the talented individuals who quench our thirst to the ones who satisfy our sweet twos. They deal in the ooey gooey, crunchy and chewy. <laughs> I'd like to deal in the ooey gooey, crunchy and chewy. These are the awards for baking and dessert. We begin with nominees for Outstanding Baker, Zachary Gulper of Bien Cui in New York City, Maura Kilpatrick of Sofra Bakery and Cafe in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Lisa Ludwinski of Sister Pie in Detroit, Avery Ruzica of Manresa Bread in Los Gatos, California, and Greg Wade of Public and Quality Bread in Chicago. More ooey gooeyness, the Outstanding Pastry Chef nominees presented by Lavazza are Juan Contreras of Atelier Crenn in San Francisco, Kelly Fields of Willa Jean in New Orleans, Meg Gallus of Boca in Chicago, Margarita Mansky of Republique in Los Angeles, and Piche Ong of Brothers and Sisters in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I heard a clap. We'll give them claps. Everyone likes dessert. Moving on now to the backbone of our industry, our service professionals. Here are the nominees who excel in the art of outstanding service. They are Brightsons in New Orleans, Canlis in Seattle, 
Frasca Food and Wine in Boulder, California. Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Saisons in San Francisco. Swan Oyster Depot in San Francisco. And Zingerman's Roadhouse in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The nominees for Outstanding Restaurateur presented by Magellan Corporation are Hugh Atchison uh, in Atlanta for Empire State South, 5 and 10, The National and Other Restaurants. Kevin Bohm and Rob Katz of Boca Restaurant Group in Chicago, Boca, Girl and the Goat, Momotaro, and others. Joanne Clevenger of Upper Line in New Orleans. Ken Oranger in Boston for Little Donkey, Toro, Uni, and his other restaurants. Alex Raj and Eder Montero in New York City for La Vara, Chiquito, San Julivero Fishery, and other restaurants. And Ellen Yin of High Street Hospitality Group in Philadelphia for Fork, High Street on Market, and High Street on Hudson in New York City. We are in the home stretch. I'm going to welcome back Claire to bring it on home. Thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. These next nominees are outstanding chefs, all under the age of 30 and all with endless talent and potential. These are the ones to watch. So these are the nominees for Rising Star Chef of the Year, presented by San Pellegrino Sparkling Natural Mineral Water. Anna Castro, Coquette, New Orleans. Alicia Elens, MFK, Chicago. Alexander Hong, Sorrel, San Francisco. Jesse Ito, Roa Izakaya, Philadelphia. Kwame Onwachi, Kith and Kin, Washington, D.C. Jonathan Yao, Cato, Los Angeles. Mitchell, I think you're back up. <laughs> yeah. Best new restaurant. Hello, best new restaurant. <laughs> Angler, San Francisco, Adamix in New York City, Bavel in Los Angeles, Franchette in New York City, and Major Domo in Los Angeles. Don't go away. I think oh, I stay. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> pardon me. Um, on to the nominees for Outstanding Restaurant, presented by San Pellegrino Sparkling, Sparkling Natural Mineral Water. These remarkable and enduring restaurants have been in business for at least 10 years. They are Balthazar, New York, Fig, Charleston, Halio, Washington, Quince, San Francisco, and Zahav in Philadelphia. And finally, here is the award for Outstanding Chef, presented by All Clad Metal Crafters. The nominees are Ashley Christensen, Pools Diner, Raleigh, David Kinch, Manresa, Los, Los Gatos, California, Corey Lee, Benu, San Francisco, Donald Link, Herb Saint, New Orleans, and Mark Vitri, uh, Vetri, Vetri Cucina in Philadelphia. So congratulations to all our 2019 James Beard Award nominees. Um, it's incredibly exciting. So as a reminder, our Media Awards Dinner takes place on April the 26th in New York City, and we'll see you in Chicago for our Gala Awards on May the 6th, featuring Master of Ceremonies Jesse Tyler Ferguson of Modern Family. Um, the box office opens today, and all our details will be on our website. So please don't forget the James Beard Awards will be live-streamed on Twitter at Beard Foundation, and on our awards page at jamesbeard.org. So if you can't join us in person for the live show, please tune in and help us celebrate. Um, but before we conclude, I want to welcome James Beard award-winning chef Hugo Ortega back to the stage. <laughs> chef Hugo. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, James Beard Foundation. And um, what a moment in our... Uh, a beloved Houston, Texas. My God, what a city. And uh, we welcome you with open arms. And um, thank you so much for coming. And um, so I would say, la mesa está servida. So we have tamales, and we have um, chilaquiles, and we have all kinds of wonderful things for you. And once again, thank you so much for being part of uh, our city and uh, in many ways and I uh, thank you James Beard Foundation for being with us and thank you so very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay.
Okay, we're nearly there. So thank you, Chef, and sincere thanks again to my co-presenters today, Mitchell Davis and Quatrano and David Whitaker, and to David Mintzberg and Houston First, and this wonderful city of Houston for hosting us today, along with the many partners here that make it possible. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Congratulations once again to all our 2019 James Beard Award nominees. Um, so now let's go enjoy the breakfast. Bon appetit. Thank you.